In this video, I'm going to be taking you through how to do a laser cut test card in Lightburn. So we're going off of the back of the other video that I put out last week. That was the engraving test test card. I will leave a link in the description to that one if you want to go and check that out. I'm going to do a couple of different variations. So this is 3mm MDF. I'm using a low powered 10 watt diode laser. I'm able to cut uh, 3mm MDF fairly easily with one pass. But if I need to do something thicker like this 6mm Sapili faced MDF, I'm going to show you how to set this up so you can do multiple passes at a specific power with different speeds. So we're going to be using the same process as last time using the material test in Lightburn. So let's get into Lightburn and take a look. So same as before, we need to go across to laser tools and in this drop down menu, we need to go to material test and then you'll get this pop up window. Like I said before, with the presets, you have these built in presets, whether you have a CO2 laser or a diode laser, these are pre-built in. So we'll use one of those. These are the ones that I've set up. So once you've customized your cut test, I would go ahead and save it. So I'm going to jump into the diode cut test. If you are using a CO2 laser, it looks exactly the same. You have uh, parameters is speed and power. Same with the diode cut test, speed and power. Everything's kind of set up the same. The same is true in this instance as it was last time. When it comes to the power settings on a CO2 laser, make sure that you do not exceed 60%. If you can, I would try and bring that down, but 60 should be fine. I run my 130 watt CO2 laser at 60% most of the time. For diode users, again, it's entirely up to you. Uh, you can use 100%. I use 100% most of the time when I'm using my 10 watt. It will degrade the laser module. Like I said in the previous video, if I can get away with using a lower power, I can drop my power down to say 80% and it not impact how much more time it takes. I more than likely drop it down to 80%, but most of the time for my cutting, I leave it at 100. So first of all, I'm going to run through the standard procedure for a test card. That'll be one pass, different speeds and different power settings. So we're going to be keeping it exactly the same as it is here. So in the vertical rows, we have the count, which is 10, the parameter, which is speed, the min and max speeds, the height of the square that you'll be cutting out, and Y center is where it's positioned on your laser bed. For the min and max speeds, you can research what the manufacturer's specified speeds and powers are. So you can research those and it'll give you a rough baseline. For me and my laser, I've been using this for years and I already have a rough idea of what I can plug in. As a personal preference, I would rather not go any slower than 100 millimeters per minute. It's a very, very slow speed. And if it takes longer than that to cut a project out, I will tend to take that project to my other laser, which is basically meant for cutting. But as a min speed, if it cuts out at 100 millimeters per minute, I will run it on this laser if I have to for a tutorial or whatever. The max speed, because this is only a 10 watt laser, and again, because I kind of know the limitations of my laser, it won't really go up above 400 for three millimeter MDF. But if you want this as a generic test card, you can leave this at say 600 millimeters per minute. And that way, if you're not cutting wood and you might dabble in some fabrics or like cardboard and paper, you may want to increase your max speed even further. The height is going to be the dimension of the squares that are going to be cut out. So if we just go to preview quickly, these squares that you see here, I typed in 6000, not 600. And then if we go to preview, so here you can see that we've got a count of 10 in the vertical rows or the vertical columns. And then we have the count of 10 in the horizontal rows or columns. So on the horizontal columns now, 
we have count 10, which I've just shown you in the preview. The parameter is power, and these are set at 10 to 100%. If you're wanting to cut things, I would just leave this as they are. And again, the width is the size of the squares being cut out. And again, like I said in the previous video, if you're wanting to cut these out, I prefer cutting five by fives because they're nice and close together. If you cut anything larger, the heat from the laser can disperse. If you're running it at a too high a power, at a too slow a speed, what you can find is that the squares will start burning into one another. So when you come to doing some intricate, like fine details, if you're cutting those out, you will know whether or not you'll have issues with it doing five millimeter squares as opposed to 10 or 15 millimeter squares. And it'll also increase the time if you use bigger, bigger squares. No, that's my project. Screen only, there we go. And then the X and Y center. These are just the positioning on the laser bed. So 450 millimeters by 650 millimeters. That's basically dead center of my CO2 laser engraver. To put this in a different corner of our laser engraver, if you want to cut it in the top left hand corner. So depending on where your laser head homes to. So on my CO2 laser, it homes to the back right hand corner. And up here you can see X and Y. These are the axis of your laser engraver. So what it means is if you want to put this cut test into a specific place on your work bed, say the top left hand corner, what we can do is where it's labeled X, you can see that the numbers increase in value across the top and the Y decreases in value going to the back of the laser. So the Y wants to be as lower figure as possible and the X wants to be the highest figure possible. So my overall bed size of the CO2 laser is 1300 by 900. So that's why it's in the center of the bed at the moment at 450 by 650. Output size here, we can see that we can see that the output size is just for argument's sake, four inches by four inches. It's nearly 100 mil by 100 mil. So what we can do is with the Y, we can bring that to 50 mil because that'll be the center of the test card. And for the X, which is going up in value, we can put this to 1250 and that'll put it on the very, very edge of the laser bed. Just bear in mind, the X and Y axis may differ depending on your laser and how it's set up. So the X and Y, where my X value goes up in value from right to left and my Y axis goes up in value from top to bottom, yours may be opposite. So just bear that in mind when it comes to where you're wanting to position your test piece of wood or acrylic or whatever whatever material you're wanting to do a test card on. One thing I didn't touch in the last one is you can title these. So say we're doing three millimeter MDF, we can put that in, in the top there and it will write it out on the top of your test card. Under material settings, because you have done an engrave test, if you haven't, go and check the link in the description. That will take you to the engrave test card. Here you can plug in the speeds to engrave your text. So for my diode laser, I will put that at 1500. And because it's a 10 watt laser, I'm going to put that at 30 and press OK, and that'll save that. And then edit, edit text settings. This is gonna be the line. So these will be the numbers that get printed out. And I'm just going to do the same. So I'm gonna put in 1500 speed by 30. And if you've got min power settings, put 30 as well. And then the enable border settings. So I'll show you a trick in a second. But if we go to preview, what you'll see is the text gets engraved first and then the squares get cut out after. So if you don't know what your cut settings will be for that material, which is one of the reasons why you're doing a test in the first place, what I tend to do is just uncheck this enable border and go to preview. So now you see that this line hasn't gone around the outside to cut it out. And what you can do is once the laser engraver has finished cutting out your squares, so it's run the project. What you can do is leave the material in 
your laser and pick one of the settings that the engraver has been able to cut through that material. And once you've done that, you can go back to enable border, edit border settings, and then you can pick the speed and power to then cut out that border. So when we go to preview again what we can do what we can see is this is where it finished last time and if you see in the top left there the cursor is at the top what we can do is just bring this playhead to where it just starts cutting or as it starts moving from that 100 percent or even if it's still partly cutting out this square uh, it won't really matter too much so once you've got this playhead so it's about to traverse to the outline you can then go start here and then start job on laser from here and what that'll do is it'll just cut out the border afterwards so now that your test card is completed what we can do is just go across to the save icon at the top and you can type in whatever name you you want to to label this test card once you select ok under presets you'll then find it under user presets so say for argument's sake you've labeled it as my diode three millimeter cut test you can just select that and you can go back to these settings in future so what happens if your test card ends up something like this you've got a couple of cutouts or maybe you don't have any cuts at all so this material is quite thick and because we're using a low powered laser cutter laser engraver if you don't have any squares cut out what i'm going to show you next is how to change the parameters from speed and power to passes and speed and then you'll end up with a test card that looks like this so at the bottom here we have passes the number of uh, times it goes round to cut it out we're going to leave the power at a consistent power of 100%, or if you don't want to use 100%, you can use 80, 90, 70, whatever you prefer. And then the speed is going to change as we come up. So I'll go through how to set that one up now. So same again, going back to laser tools, we're going to go to material test. Under presets, there won't be anything built in for passes and speed so we'll have to create our own mine i have saved under six millimeter cut test we can see that the parameter has changed to passes so in your case if you haven't done this again we'll go to diode cut test and i'm going to set this up for my 10 watt laser diode so the vertical rows we are going to leave it at 10 going to bring the minimum speed down to 100 and the max speed I'm going to take to 400. This is for the speed. Everything else is gonna stay the same and you can change where you want to position your laser head for your test. On the horizontal columns, this is where we're going to change the parameter of power to passes. The count I'm going to bring down to five. You can bring this down to three if you want. I've brought mine down to three passes because if it takes five passes to cut out a project, I'm probably not going to use my diode laser. So if it takes three passes, I might consider using my diode laser, but we'll leave it at five for this example. For the minimum, so we're gonna start off with one pass and then the max passes, we're going to go to five. If we leave this at 10, let me just show you. If we go to preview, it'll come up looking like this. We've got one, three and a half, five and a half, 7.8 and 10. It's just not going to recognize fractions of a pass. So we'll bring this number down to match the count number. So if this was three, we can bring this down to three. And again, like I said, in this example, we'll use five. And then if we go to preview, this is what it'll look like. So we've got one pass, two, three, four, and five. Once again, what we can do is just title this uh, whatever you want. So I'll put in six millimeter Sapili MDF. So when it comes to material settings, where it says max power here, instead of 30, we want to type in our power setting. So for me, I'm going to put in 100. You do not wish to put 100 in because you want to get the most out of your laser module. So if you want to put 80% power in, you can do that. Whatever figure you want to run, just put in this max power. 
For the speed, as far as I'm aware, this does not have any effect. I've just run three tests to make sure that it still cuts the same. I've plugged in 400 millimeters uh, per minute on the speed and it has cut exactly the same. So as far as I know, the speed doesn't affect the test card here. So we can go ahead and click OK. Edit text settings, that's basically your writing. And we can leave this exactly the same as the last one. So we'll go to preview and once we get to the end, you can see which one of these has cut out. So you can pick one of those and then we can go to edit border settings and then say you have to use 100 speed and a max power of 100 and min power, bring that back up to 100 as well. And then say it takes three passes to cut that out. You can select OK. Enable the border settings by clicking on the checkbox. And then we can go to preview. And as you can see, this box is around the outside now. And what we can do, like last time, we'll just bring that back until it's finished on the last square. And then we can go start here. Start job on laser from here. And then that will cut out our test. So there you have a nice, simple test card done in Lightburn. If you found this video useful, please remember to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. In the next video, I'll be going through curve tests and some simple ways of getting around a few bits and pieces when it comes to build projects. So if you like building stuff, so if you like building stuff, you've got all of this joinery, if the light will pick it up. There we go. We've got all of this joinery here. So because material thickness can change, even though it's all advertised as the same uh, material thickness. So all of this was three mil. But in most cases, my three millimeter uh, material comes out at roughly three and a quarter, anywhere between three and 3.4 mil. So nearly three and a half, it's a half mil discrepancy in the same board. So in the next video, I'll take you through how to resize your slots and tabs potentially again through Lightburn and another couple of simple ways of getting around certain things when it comes to building stuff. I'm a person that really enjoys building stuff and it's a very useful thing to know if A, you buy any of my plans if they're build projects. I know I had to sort out a couple of files for people that bought my Christmas baubles. Um, so I'll be going through how to do simple fixes with things like that because advertised materials aren't necessarily the material thickness that's advertised. So again, if you found this video useful, take a look in the description. There'll be a link to the engraving test video. So I'll walk you through how I just did this one. And as soon as the curve test video is done, I will leave a link in the description for that one as well. And again, if you find yourself coming back on the regular, just make sure that you're subscribed and make sure that notification bell is turned on. That way you never miss out on any future videos. Thanks again. I shall sure see you in the next video.